This program is designed to provide general information with regards to the subject matters covered. This information is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, sponsors, or station are engaged in rendering any specific and personal, medical, financial, legal, counseling, professional service, or any advice. You should seek the services of competent professionals before applying or trying any suggested ideas. Here we are. If it's Tuesday night, no matter where you are around the world, it has to be live at five movie reviews and more. So we got to start off with this because we had a bunch of changes and everything, and it's been kind of fun. Uh, last night, Terry and I, we did RA Nation, and that was fun to do that, wasn't it, Terry? That was really uh, fun. Was yeah, I, I, I enjoyed that. It was it was fun. It was It's good to be on somebody else's show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, isn't it? <laughs> that is true. That was kind of fun. It's fun to be the guest, you know? So, yeah, I had a good time. And whose show was that? None other than our own engineer, the one and yes. only Roxy with Ant-Man, her co-host. And uh, that, was, that was actually fun. I was telling a couple people about it today, and I was telling Trixie, Trixie, we got to get you on that show. So uh, Roxy has another person lined up just in case. You know, now this young lady has been so busy, Trixie, that she's running around to another state all of a sudden pretty soon. And But I've been happy because it's if she hasn't been barbecuing, she hasn't yeah. been out there telling people what to do. And, you know, I don't know what's happening with the possums or the raccoons or anything like that. But <laughs> she pets. has been busy doing everything. So here's the one and only, you know, award-winning, <laughs> bronze, silver, host producer, the one and only from Houston, Texas, Trixie Woo! Jen. What custom trends? We gotta leave. We gotta start with that because she's been busy. And yes, that is an alien over her right shoulder. Yes, because she likes that, and it's actually her backpack. Just in case, no, you're not tripping. It's real. <laughs> yeah. And with that, uh, so here's the other person. So red carpet host. Uh, she calls herself nonstop, and she kind of is when she's full stop. But right now, she's nonstop. But the whole thing is about this: is that uh, we have to say hi to the one and only Terry Marie. Hi. I, <laughs> she she has this. Hi. I'm in, I'm in I'm actually in Northern California right now. I'm in Grass Valley and it's hotter than hell here. I it's so weird like how like much hotter it is when I leave the beach area. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and then no, so it's here's like the thing. It's hundred degrees. Is it mm -hmm. really? It must be because she's frozen up there all of a sudden. I know. <laughs> now she disappeared. So here's the whole thing about this. I like this man. I've been I've been telling him, I've been telling people about him for a while. It's a last minute thing. I was gonna have John sometime in August. He doesn't know that. But it was one of those things where we had a switch with everything and you just go with it no matter what. <clears throat> so I love this. We're live around the world on Talk4 TV, obviously, Talk4 Media, K4 HD radio. K4 HD podcasting, worldwide TV network, <coughs> women on TV.tv, I2247 out of Franklin, Tennessee, and all the platforms around the world. This is special because I'll tell you why. I love when we were talking, it's got to be about two, two and a half months ago now. And I didn't know who he was, but then I did know who he was. So without further ado, Grammy nominated, musician, singer, songwriter, producer. This song is interesting. I played it three times today. I love this new song. I'm still hooked on Hallelujah, how he did it. But the whole thing about this, it's all about that special day. So this is the special day with John, the one and only John Butcher. Hey, John, it's good to see you. How you doing? Hey, man, how are you? Not too good bad. Good to see you. No, it's good to see you, too, because I've been telling well. everybody what you really do. <laughs> 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 all, all the stuff that you do. Because here's the thing. I was, I, we, was gonna, we were going to have April Rose on, and then something came up, and I'm like, well, 
let's get John. Is he available? And Eileen cool. Shapiro said, he's around. I'm like, what's happening then? I was just standing around waiting for a bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the whole thing. So Trixie does her flyers whenever she has them. So I'm like, Trick, I, I'm hoping she has time. And she was online. I'm like, can we get one of John real quick? And she did it like, I think like within five minutes. Because oh, she yeah. creates our flyers and stuff like that. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, I was like happy that she was available and I was proud. So how are you John, in case you don't how are you know doing tonight. How are you doing? Trixie, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's been a wonderful day. I've been I'm kind of caught up with all my work. So I'm just excited well, for the weekend. Very yeah, good. Things are going well. I'm glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. I'm up here in uh, Massachusetts, as you may know. Okay. And I live by the ocean and you would think it would be a little bit cooler by the ocean, but it's not. Um, it's, hot. it's pretty warm here. <laughs> we had a couple of cool days, but it's 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 back to summer today. Oh and, wow! And you had a oh. show last night, right? Oh um, no no no! Oh, was it? No, no the end of May you had it. I had a show a, a few nights ago. Um, I guess about a week ago now, and it was my first one after you know the the uh, uh, COVID vacation, and. I have to say, it's it's like riding a horse, you know. Right. It only took me about two seconds to remember how to do it. That that makes sense. That yeah. really makes sense. Let me ask you this, because you were still locked down and you were doing the safe thing. We were talking about sustainability, which we'll talk about later, and and environmentally friendly stuff. Where where I feel we really connected on. Talk sure. about that. So you went in, you did this show. What was that like in New Hampshire doing that? Yeah, it it it, it was it was cool. Um, I think everybody, in terms of uh, ticket buyers and people that go to shows, a little bit nervous about about how to adjust to the new reality of not wearing masks, you know. And everyone's a little a little a little uh, cautious. But that being said, it only took about two seconds uh, for everyone that was there. I don't know how many thousand people were there to get into the swing of things again. And I have to tell you, it it's really good to be back and doing that again. You know, I, I was afraid that I'd forgotten how. <laughs> you know? Like, like, do I remember how to do this? Where's my hand go again? And but, but it was it, it, it was a great show. I think everyone had a great time. And more than that, it was a it was a kind of a, a rite of passage with all, all of us coming back from COVID. And that makes sense. So, Trixie, you've been doing a lot of things, whether it's on the music side, whether it's on the sports side of things. And I can tell how happy she is doing these things. So on the music scene out of Houston, Texas, and then obviously, John, were you up, up way up in New Hampshire? I think you're in yeah. Derby. Is that right? Yeah. Talk about the differences of what we've been seeing, because I haven't seen really anything in Los Angeles yet. Um, you mean in terms of uh, perception? Yeah. Yeah. We're all a little skittish. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know about you, but uh, I go into the market, right? And I'm not quite comfortable yet in, in, in getting in close proximity of people. And I think it's that way in L.A. It's that way in, in, in Boston and wherever else you might be, New York City, wherever. People are just a little skittish. It's going to take a minute for everyone to feel comfortable again, like, you know, like we used to. It's going to take a minute. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Trixie, you've been running around all over the place. You've just been happy. I mean, she's been yeah. cooking. I, I was working all the weekend, but she was cooking food. I'm like, I'd love to have some of that food. I was just <laughs> locked down on my computer and not really going anyplace unless I went to the Grove. Oh, I'll That's be all right I was there. doing. I'll be right there. <laughs> well, she, she puts up all these great photos of what she's cooking out yeah. there. I'm like, yeah. well, this is really good. Talk about I love the cooking. barbecue. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I love barbecue and, you know, I'm a big foodie and maybe one of these days I'm going to have a cooking show so you never know. So sometimes when I post all these things of of food, it's not just because I love food, but I I like to share different recipes with other people online too. And so, yeah, just trying to learn new things and never know. <laughs> all of us are kind of getting our, 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 our uh, sea legs back. Um, yeah. After, after, yeah. After a long break that none of us wanted to take. And, and I think by the end of the summer, God, God willing, and, and there aren't any more uh, uh, variants of the COVID-19, 
that we'll all get our comfort back. We, we're not wearing masks, but we have to get our comfort zone back. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. I'm, I'm back, Brian. <laughs> I, I didn't notice. Is. I didn't notice you went any place in the first place, Terry. Uh, my, inter my internet, you know, this is the problem. Like, you know, when you're, when you're traveling. <laughs> it's <laughs> you're technology. Uh, I, well, yeah, it's technology. I heard you guys talking about um, getting back to normal. I, I can tell you I was at LAX this morning. And you had never known that we had a pandemic. It was like uh, there were so many people there. Then I got to say that I got to go get my rental car in Sacramento, and there was a line at the door at the rental car place. So yeah. people wow. are like over it. I mean, I, I I and I forgot how LAX used to be because you know I've tra I traveled a couple of times you know during the pandemic, but I mean it was just like I mean it, it was it was weird because I got so used to no one being around. Yeah, and it was odd to me because there was lines everywhere, and yeah. you know, it was like it, it, you know, it's like it's over. It just, it just was, it was, it was just weird. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think we all feel that way, Terry. We, we <laughs> all there's a comfort zone we have to get back. You know, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sure I speak for you too. I'm not completely a hundred percent at ease. Not you know, not yet. Uh, I was I happy to have that show, but. It's a little skittish. I mean, I just, I didn't really try to live in fear. I mean, I, I you know, Brian knows I was, did everything I could to be, you know, to be careful and protect myself. But I just, I just kind of just tried not to live in fear. But what was weird to me today was it just like, oh, everybody's, it just like, it ended. <laughs> they opened up. <laughs> like, I mean, LAX was like how LAX was before. Yeah. COVID, like, you, it, and LAX is a nightmare. I mean, I hate it. <laughs> it's just the worst airport to fly out of. And it really so, is. It, no, it's just so disorganized. It's just like, I don't know. It just, it it was a culture shock. I, that's all I have to say. And then, you know, they, we got on the bus to go over to get the rental cars. They just sardined everybody in. I didn't like that at all, though. Exactly. They just, they're they're yeah. sardining people in that close together i mean literally i was like this on the bus to get from the you know if you fly to sacramento you got to take a bus to the rental car thing and that that was the only thing that kind of like i was not happy about that at all but i bet you a lot of people feel that way a lot of people aren't happy with that uh yeah. houston fort worth is another airport you want to stay away from if if you can uh -huh. Uh, and, and, and Trixie's laughing. <laughs> I was even there during the pandemic. Even during yeah. the pandemic, I traveled like five five different times during the pandemic, and um, just to get away to Vegas. And I liked that there was no lines, and I had the restaurant to myself. To me, that was wonderful. Yeah. You know. So now it's different because now you have to wait, and you're annoyed now. Now it's like, oh, I gotta wait, but then it's good too because people need to get back to work and, you know. Well, I got to say this real quick. So we have to say hi to uh, Teresa Sabin from Marketing, um, Sabin Marketing Promotions because I like her. Uh, James, we'll be there. Linda Steele will be back next week. And then the other thing about this, James, we got to go back and tell everybody how you started. Your, your, how you started as a musician is fascinating to me. I had, I, I knew, I, I had no idea that you grew up in Alaska yeah, and you were that that one person of color. Talk about your background. It's fascinating to me still to this day. My 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 parents uh, uh, worked for uh, RCA, the government arm of RCA, back in the '60s, and and so um, I grew up in Alaska, where there was an Air Force base, which which they weren't in the military, but they worked for the government in computers. So that's why I was there, and that's why I grew up there, and I'm glad I did. Because what growing up in a very, very uh, remote place did for me is, I think, allow me to turn my creative energy inward and kind of figure, figure myself out. A lot of times when kids grow up, it, it, it's confusing because you're, you're in sensory overload, right? You have peer group pressure and, and, and a lot of social pressure. Dude, I didn't have any of that. Uh, I went to a, a school called Browns Court Trailer Park, and there were three people in my grade and three people in the grade under me and three people in the grade over me. We were all in one room. And, wow. and, and the village that I lived in was maybe 80 people total and then surrounded by nothing except for wilderness. 
So, so that allowed me to not be socially impacted. Say if I grew up in Philadelphia or a, a, a large city where there was a lot of turmoil in the early 70s. You know, I kind of missed that and got dropped into it later. That's a whole other story. But, but, but it allowed me, I think, to figure out that the, that the guitar was important to me and music was important to me. And I didn't have any of the other distraction that maybe other kids did. Talk about that aspect of just, again, I'm, I'm, when you end up in Boston and then the early MTV era. That's oh, also interesting. And, yeah. and again, being that person of color, yeah, you got to throw that in there also, right? Y you know what? When I first moved back to the East Coast after living in Alaska, I was scared because it's the first time I'd heard the N-word. It was the first time that I sort of, you know, came in close proximity to prejudice. And jumping from there, I'm going to make a big jump to MTV. I had a hard time, me and Michael Jackson being the only people of color who were on MTV at the same time, because they did. there was an a opinion that a, a black guy couldn't play rock music. Now... All the fans that I had didn't know didn't know from that, right? Like they weren't paying they weren't paying attention to record executives, so it was a it was tough at the beginning. But I don't know. I don't want to complain. I've been really lucky. I've been really lucky to uh, have worked with such uh, talented people around the world, and to have made my mark in the music business makes me very happy. So I can't complain too much. I really can't. So Teresa wants to know what year were you talking about? All right. I guess uh, thinking about it, I graduated high school in 76, 75. So uh, uh, when I w moved back to the East Coast from Alaska, my parents are from the East Coast. And when, we, when the family came back east, uh, I was in my second year of high school. So a, a, a junior. And uh, it took me a whole year to, to, to figure out what the hell was going on, you know. Um, getting on a school bus and running into uh, a bigot on the school bus. Uh, you know, <laughs> I had no idea what was going on. You know, I heard, I heard the N-word and I looked around to see who he was talking about. And so it was like that. But I don't want to, I want to make it sound like I feel bad for myself because all of those things contribute to who you become, right? They all, they, they all contribute hey. to you become and i'm happy with the man i've become and i'm i'm i feel lucky that i've had as much success in music as i've had so i'm not really complaining it's just my story so john talk about this aspect of things when it's 85 86 yeah where are you going back into time on that for those people who may not know your history where are you in those years? What are you doing yeah. with that guitar at that point? Yeah, I was in a band called uh, John Butcher Axis. And uh, we made a few records for uh, 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 Polygram and, and Capitol. And at that time, I was touring around the world with uh, uh, Def Leppard and uh, the Jay Giles band and, oh, man, the Scorpions and on and on and on, a lot of bands. And, and so I was living my rock and roll fantasy at that time. You know, um. I was in a tree. The, the, my band was a trio uh, where I was the guitar player and singer. And so, you know, in, in some ways it was liberating, man, because I felt like I it was all new for me. It was all fresh water, you know, for me to drink. And I, I, I felt honored to be in that position. Plus, I had such success at, at local radio, WBCN in Boston, really got, got behind my early music. So in those years you're talking about, I was making records and touring. You know, so, so Trixie, I think about this. Mm -hmm. Did you know of John's background? Did you, had you heard of him or anything like that? And same uh, question goes to Terry. No, not at all. And, and um, I'll, you know, since you sent me the email and I just quickly, you know, uh, I wasn't able to Google and, and, you know, search on his music and stuff. Cause I, I was uh, um, doing other things on work, but, yeah, anything with music, I already knew. And then when, when uh, you had put that he's jazz and blues, I wanted to know more about that. And what was your wildest moment back then? 
Yeah. You know, any groupies? What kind of craziness <laughs> happened back then? Give us a story. Dixie, I'm a married man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know. <laughs> hey, I'm going to say, what's your this, wildest moment? I got to know. I, this is how know. I answer that. <laughs> I had as many wild moments as you might expect, but but maybe not as many as you think. Uh, uh, w when I was touring, I lived a very, very boring life. Meaning, I finished the show, I towel off, maybe get something to eat and go to my room and read and get ready for the next night. So my bandmates are out going, yee and partying <laughs> and all that stuff. And that just, that just wasn't me. I was up at like, uh, I would be up running the next day after a gig, uh, you know, at seven o'clock in the morning, going by my bass player's window going, hey, come on, you want to go out? And they're <laughs> going, oh, 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 you know. And I, <laughs> so that wasn't really, you know, that the, the wild rock and roll stuff and throwing TVs and swimming pools, I never did it much. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> well, that's good to know. I, I thought I'd try to ask and see if I could get something. Yeah. <laughs> thought I'd see if I could get one story or something crazy. I'm or, a married man. You know. <laughs> I, I thought it was a great. I thought it was a great oh. question, Trixie. <laughs> just, yeah, it's a good question. I, okay, let me give you a normal question. Sure. Did you make any new music while being in COVID? Were you practicing thank daily you so, or? Yeah, thank you so much for asking. I actually did. I uh, uh, I decided that while that we were on lockdown and I I couldn't travel and and couldn't do what I normally did, I put all my energy into making a new record called Special Day. Oh, and I'm really happy with it. I'm proud of it. It came out about two weeks ago, and I did that. And I also formed a film company uh, uh, called Watercolors Movies. Um, so I did all of that in, in, in the 13 months where I wasn't able to travel. And I have to tell you, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. Not to mention that my wife and, and I uh, uh, grew, grew a garden of uh, uh -huh. vegetables and, and we got two new kitties. And uh, I mean, I, I felt like I reconnected with my life in a lot of ways. Yeah. And That's the good great. thing about that also that you actually had a great year. Yeah. last year because you were you know it brought you and your wife closer and i was happy to hear that and i'm yeah. i'm telling people i only know 31 people last year that had a good year that is that's just pathetic when you think of all the people with, that we all know with as horrible as the as the uh, uh the virus is and was and how many people suffered a lot of people turned inside their house uh, mm -hmm. uh and, and and improved it or or did something with themselves that was positive and that's what we did you know, we, 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 like I told you, we grew a garden and we spent some time in home repair and I'm, I'm recording in my studio every day. And so I turned that time into something really positive and I'm glad I did. So Terry, I know you had a question before, uh, when Trixie and I were jumping all over you. So what was it? <laughs> when, when you're jumping over about what? You guys were always <laughs> jumping on me. It was new. <laughs> no, I just was, I have, okay. So my question is, is totally different. And I, I know that I kind of, I got uh, thrown out. So maybe I missed this, <laughs> but I'm just curious about your childhood growing up in Alaska. Cause I think that would be fascinating. I'm just a nature person. So I'm just wondering like, I mean, did you grow up like hunting and fishing and all that kind of stuff? Or like, when you think of Alaska, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I fished and hunt, hunted with my father in, in California, believe it or not. But <laughs> it just, Alaska is just so beautiful. And like, that's somewhere I, I really like want to go to. But I just was curious of what was it like to grow up there? And then you kind of said a little bit about the culture shock of moving here. Does that, yeah. I, I, just, yeah. I, 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 I didn't, I didn't really hunt. Mm -hmm. But I did fish and hike. Mm -hmm. um, I lived uh, about, uh, oh, I guess, about 400 miles from the base of Mount McKinley uh, in Mount McKinley Park. And the mountain is huge. So mm -hmm. when I was a kid, I would, me and my friend Ronnie Murphy, would decide to walk to it. Not realizing it's kind of impossible to walk 500 miles. Um, I spent time uh, riding horses and and and. I, I really appreciate growing up in in the woods and 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 away from city. I didn't know I appreciated it at the time. You know, I didn't know. 
but I found out that I did once I, I, I moved away. <laughs> you know, and that makes sense of why you started your garden and everything like that when yeah. we were talking about sustainability, environmentally friendly, and then, yeah. you know, go into the movie aspect of things because you did a lot of great things. And I think you did a lot of great things underneath the radar. I, I, I was starting to tell you I uh, formed a company called Watercolors uh, Movies. And what Watercolors is, is a small film company. Uh, uh, all artists or painters or musicians realize now that vi if, if, if you're not being seen on video, you kind of don't exist. It used to be back in the day to promote a record. You didn't necessarily need an MTV video. It helped but you could do it through radio. Well, that's different now. With the, with the internet, you kind of have to be online and seen. And so Watercolors Movies, I started for artists and painters and musicians to get the word out uh, in like one minute uh, 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 movies, mini movies, um, or two minute mi mini movies uh, that allowed them to get their message out uh, without going uh, bankrupt, frankly. Talk about what, what what do you see on the social media side of things now? What are you looking at? And it, and it makes sense, uh, you know, that you weren't partying that hard. You did your share. We all did our share yeah. things, right, Terry? But it was yes. one of those things that you were in the you really were in the nature part of stuff. I'm here now in that aspect of things. Yeah. I've done a lot of things that I wanted to do. Now it's about I see how the climate is changing. I see yeah. when my friends are calling me from Greece and it's a hundred degrees and absolutely it's, true. Yeah. It's a hundred degrees in Calgary, which makes absolutely no sense. No. And then nobody's got air conditioning because it does never gets that hot, but it, that's only the start of stuff. This is where you and I were connecting before when we last spoke. Absolutely spoke. true. Look, sustainability is the only thing that matters now. Anybody with two eyes can see that the planet is being stressed. Now, Speaking for myself, I'd like to hang on to Earth a little while longer. And, and so it matters what we do. It matters how we eat. And it matters where we put our energies. My movie company is about uh, 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 sustainability in that we try to keep a consistent message about positive Earth, plus Earth. You know what I mean? Uh, and and I, I don't know, man. I can't. Think of any other way to live at this point. You know, I'm not a, I, I, I don't live in excess. I live a very grounded life. And mm -hmm. I like that. I, I live with animals and plants and the ocean nearby. And that makes me happy. And so my message is about sustainability because this is the only earth we have. It'd be nice to hang on to it for a little while longer. Trixie, give uh, John a, an idea of what you do and everything. And then obviously you have your animals too. How are they doing? Yeah. <laughs> They're doing good. They're doing good. Um, I actually have a, a few feral cats and a raccoon and possum that come by every night. And um, right now I'm working on customtrends.tv. Now that the pandemic's kind of slowed down a bit, I can get out and cover events. And I'm, That's wonderful. Um, yeah, I'm getting back out there and collecting all these episodes and footage and uh, also with the pandemic, I started, I, I've always wanted to do a sporting show and um, I took the time during the pandemic to put it all together and kind of think about what I was going to do, you know, and uh, every, all my plan worked. So, you know, and the pilot, every, you know, it's, it's loved and it's a good concept of uh, interviewing. Yeah. I'm interviewing, um, it's being proficient. It's called being proficient and um, interviewing race car drivers oh, that are wow. professional race car drivers. And I'm also uh, getting involved with the MMA, um, the UFC fighters. We have a lot oh, here. Wow. Huh. Yeah, we have a lot here in Houston. So we have quite a few gyms and um, they're fighting out of Houston. So I don't need to travel too far. I could just go oh. to their gym and interview the guys. And so that's the next. And uh, also want to get involved with the women in sports. So we nice. have... Uh, roller derby and i think that's very extreme yeah. uh, you know being on roller skates and yeah. you know <laughs> knocking each other down so uh, yeah. i'm yeah i i definitely want to uh, get back to interviewing them ladies with they have a few teams here in houston and um so those are the three categories i kind of wanted to do for this season yes. and if things go well we do a second season and we can go to more extreme sports so yeah yeah it's going good and i like it because um there are things that I like to do. I've always said I'm going to do something. I'm going to cover things that I like. Love you it. Know? I love it. Yeah. 
That's and John, I mean. those those shiny objects to her left are, are her awards. <laughs> In case you were wondering yes. what they were. Oh my. The the bronze yeah. and silver. There's the uh, silver. That she got. That's wonderful. Yeah. This one was from the 2020 um Super Bowl in Miami. So uh that was last year. So I got that uh May 20 May 26th of 2020. So that was the last event I actually got to do because of the COVID. <laughs> so That's yeah, that was that was it. But um where I shall return and hopefully nice. next year can compete in different other, um, you know, award shows and stuff. So we'll just see how things go. And I'm, I'm optimistic and, you know, I'm ready to go travel internationally as well. So uh, we have Sport Tail coming up in October for the sports awards. So are you definitely. nervous about traveling uh, 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 internationally? Are you nervous you about know, that? <clears throat> At first, I, I was, but then um, I was going to do the Cannes Film Festival because it's going on. Actually, I think it starts tomorrow. Yeah. But um, a lot of my friends here in L.A. that um, are in films and in productions, uh, they're not going. And so I usually have a great time with them because we all meet up. And yeah. um, they said they weren't going and a lot of my friends. So I, I decided to hold off another year, <laughs> you know, not go this year. And, yeah. and uh, hopefully things will look better. And. The comfort too, like you mentioned, I don't know, you know, and I haven't yeah. got vaccinated, I'll be honest. And um, so I I just didn't know, uh, especially I didn't think there would be so many people there to, you know, we'll see. I'm I'm just kind of gonna see what how how the how many people attend this this year and then that'll pretty much uh, I'll see if if it's if it went well, then in October I'm gonna I'm gonna have to make that move and go travel out to Monaco, Monte Carlo in October. Yeah. And, you know, if, if there's a lot of people, if we the all have looks to good. reclaim our comfort zone, we got to reclaim yeah. our comfort zone. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at the pictures and look at the videos online from the Cannes Film Festival and just see how it was. And um, yeah, try to, yeah. Cause you know, then you're definitely going to meet a bunch of people <laughs> from all over the world. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I I think I might have to get vaccinated for that, you know, because <laughs> I don't know about rubbing shoulders with people from everywhere. Yeah. Maybe a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Terry, tell uh, John <laughs> who you are, what you do, and talk about why food is important for you, especially not processed food. Oh, uh, well, I'm a fitness competitor. Um, I compete in NPC. Um, I'm training right now to do a show either at the end of, well, probably end of, but end of August, September time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I eat pretty healthy, <laughs> as Brian knows, because of my training. Um, sure. And then... Um, I, I, I co-host Brian, um, I do the red carpet interviews, um, and what else do I do, Brian? Oh, <laughs> I'm involved with Sportamix, um, yeah. with Jean, with Celebrity Connected, and um, currently right now, I, I am in Sacramento. I wanted to get out of LA, so I'm kind of in the woods right now. <laughs> so, sure. and it's kind of nice. I mean, I like coming up here. It's just peaceful up here. So nice. I mean, I'm actually in Grass Valley, um, which is you know, I'm basically in the woods for the, for the rest of the week. Nice. Yeah. So John, you'll like this also. So the property that we chose is in Mariposa, mm -hmm. so it's 25 minutes away from Yosemite National Park. That's oh, that's that's where the the Dreamweaver Artist Ranch will be. That's wonderful. And, and you know what it's like when you can have it there and have that peace and serenity and everything like that. And obviously, yeah. the 10 acres that we have to grow the fruit on. No fire, no fracking, never been contaminated, which you know is very, very important. And Terry understands that too. And Trixie does too, because she's always barbecuing at everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, old Texas gal, we're always grilling out here. <laughs> hey, talk about that barbecue sauce, because is that one of your, your newfound friends too? Uh -oh. Yes, absolutely. Yes, uh, that is uh, from Mr. John Hale, He's a two time world champion for Funny Car Chaos. Got to meet in Ennis, Texas, uh, in March, and he's just a wonderful guy. I'm actually going to be at his um, at his place uh, in Dallas this Friday. I'm going to stop by at his uh, hangar, his air his airport, and um, so where we're all meeting up, and then we're driving out to uh, Wichita, Kansas, for the 58th annual Summer Nationals. So it's a an event where all the top national race car drivers come together and they have their summer nationals so it's just those really extreme fast cars and it's they're really pretty to look at and their flames come out and wow. it's just a really really fun event and Sounds um 
I'm excited for it because everyone is super nice. All the race car drivers and their tour buses and their and their race car uh, trailers and and you would think, oh my gosh, look at all this and it's so expensive and and it's so fast and it's so loud. But they're the nicest people. They really are. And Mr. John Hill, he has a uh, his uh, barbecue sauce best of Texas and it's just amazing. And he'll have it out there as well too. Um, they you know they also have booths set up and. Um, different things uh, to sell there at the events and stuff. It's a, it's a really good family event. It is so fun. It, it, I love covering, covering that. <laughs> John, notice she's driving, not flying. <laughs> I'm driving. I'm going to drive eight hours. Holy I, uh, yeah. Eight hour drive and I'm going to do it. Do you, mind long drives? Is that, do, do you mind driving long distances? Do you, do you mind driving? No. Oh no, no, not at all. I've, driven to McAllen and to South Padre Island several times and that's like oh, okay. seven hours so I did yeah. that since I was a kid so yeah. <laughs> to me eight hours one extra hour would it's okay but it's the first yeah. time to drive out of state <laughs> I've never driven out of state but nice. I'm ready and my car is all ready and you know I'm I'm not scared or nothing like that cool <laughs> Hey John, you got a concert coming yeah. up. Is it July twenty fourth? July twenty fourth. Yeah, um, uh, in New England, um, we're doing all of our warm up shows for touring uh, here in, in in the New England states. So I'm playing a place called the Center for the Arts in Natick, um, uh, in Natick, Massachusetts, on July twenty fourth with my band, the John Butcher Axis, and I'm really excited about it. We're really looking forward. To, to making a connection with our fans again. And, and I hope I remember how to play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk about being up there on stage. The, the first time you went back on stage, what was that like before you went on stage? Were you nervous? What was the feeling like for you? Nervous? No, not me. Yeah, I was nervous. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I have, uh, um, amongst guitar players, I'll say, I have a, a a reputation for a certain standard, and I I get scared that I wasn't wouldn't be able to meet it. Now it was all for naught, of course. Everything went fine, but but yeah, you know, I don't remember the Brian. I don't remember the last time I took a year and two months off, and that's what happened. You know, I took a year and two months. I played guitar and I made the record, but it's not like performing live. It's a whole different dynamic and a whole different physical discipline. So by the time I'm done with 90 minutes, I'm like, well, I'm tired, I'm blown out. And uh, and so I was nervous, but it all worked out. Talk about what's the new uh, protocols that when it comes to touring and safety and things like that from the, the truck drivers to just going from city to city, What what is, what's new? Yeah, you will see uh, a lot of truck drivers are still masked. Um, uh, I think that's because some of them aren't vaccinated and now they're scared. Uh, I see a lot of uh, uh, food handling, like, for instance, backstage at, at, uh, uh, at the green room. Um, people are more cautious and not quite as willing to get in close proximity as we were before. You know, after a show, I'm used to shaking hands and signing uh, CDs and all that sort of thing. And that didn't happen. Uh, at my at my first show back, and it probably won't happen July twenty fourth either. We're all we're all a little slow getting our comfort zone back. Well, you yeah. know, John. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, <laughs> I had a, just... uh, yeah, John. I have a question. You've sure. been playing guitar for quite some time now, and throughout yeah. the years, uh, have you had any hand problems or anything that you know, any therapy that you needed to do? Wow, it's funny you should mention that. Um, this was the first year uh, I felt a little tightness in my hands, like a little bit like carpal tunnel, but not really. And I talked to my doctor about it. And what I'm doing now is, is believe it or not, uh, exercising my hand and okay. using a, 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 hot, a warm water therapy. If I immerse my hands, in hot water or warm water, it really is helpful to making sure that my 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 you know my ligaments and and my hand muscles are limber. Uh, but this is the first time I've encountered that. I can't believe you brought it up. 
<laughs> I, I'm thinking about it, but I, I'm sorting it out. I, I, I'm working oh. it out. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just thought I'd ask because, you know, I've always heard throughout many years when, you, yeah. when you're when you playing an instrument. I was in the band back in high school and junior yeah. high and played music a while. And, of course, I didn't have any hard problems then, but uh, I've spoke to many musicians now. And uh, I know some that have gotten surgery on their arms and, yeah. and uh, uh, they've it's, had carpal tunnel. And yeah, You're so right. It, it, it happens as you get older. You know, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we don't get to stay 25 forever. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and so you have to do things to keep your body moving and limber. My wife and I go for walks uh, every day and uh, and try to keep the physical exercise at the center of our, our lives because it's important to do it. And have you had to change your image throughout the years of uh, being in the music industry? Did you feel that you needed to or did you always stay the same? I, I'm not sure I ever had an image. I kind of just look like this. You know? <laughs> You'd have shorter hair or longer hair. <laughs> yeah, you know, okay. I kinda, this is kind of the way I look. So over the years, I kind of, I mean, my hair has been longer, you know, uh, than it is now, but that's not really an image. I think this is my image. God, yeah. God help me. You know, talk about <laughs> right. when you were growing up, you had this, um, you have this iconic sound. Who, do, do people still think you sound like so and so when you hear these things? Because you mean Jimi Hendrix. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's who I think. Uh, not really, uh, Brian. That happened at the beginning, at the beginning of my career, because I'm a a, a man of color. Um, there were comparisons, but it was lazy. A lot of a uh, 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 journal, rock journalists, would just go there because it was easy. And they didn't have to think. And uh, I, I don't think I was ever really uh, a, a Jimi Hendrix impersonator or a clone. I kind of was doing my own thing. So that doesn't happen at all anymore. I mean, after, you know, a, a couple of decades of making records and, and creating your own fan base, the Jimi Hendrix comparisons don't really happen. Let me ask you this now. I, I, you know, I hate to say it, we're in the age of social media. How would someone starting off now, what advice do you give them? And I know you don't like to say that per se, what advice would you give them? But they're starting off in the social media world, putting stuff up, but not always knowing what to do. Think about that. And then what was it like when you signed your first contract? Because how are contracts these days? Well, like, well, like I mentioned before, I was lucky. I came from uh, playing, playing local shows and selling out and, and, uh, getting on the local radio station and, and getting call-ins. Now, none of that, you know, those, those, uh, uh, those, that dynamic doesn't exist anymore. There are some places to play for local bands, but they're few and far between. So I'm not sure I have advice other than to try and find your own thing and stick with it, even when everyone around you says no. Uh, uh, that's been my experience. That I've always done well if I listen to my inner voice and I've always made mistakes when I didn't. Yeah, that makes sense. How about, remember when you signed your first contract? What was that like? And what do you say to these people wanting to sign a contract but don't know or don't have anybody to go through, especially if they live in the Midwest or down in South? Yeah, I, I'm going to share a story with you. Uh, and then I have to jump. It looks like my computer is running out of power. Um, I signed my first a record contract at Polygram on the same day that John Bon Jovi signed his. So I'm walking into the the offices in New York City of Polygram, and this kid passes me, you know, with bl blonde hair and pink pants or something. I can't remember. <laughs> and I went, geez, that guy will never get anywhere. Oh, gosh. Uh, so... <laughs> Yeah, John Bon Jovi, right? So, I'm not so sure I'm, I'm in the advice giving business. What I will say is this that signing my first deal to a major record label was exciting beyond words. And what I would tell any young musician now is to find out what your thing is. I found my thing at an early age what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it, how I wanted to sound, and what I wanted to play like. I had that all figured out by 16 years old. 
And if you can do that, if you can find your, your own voice and stick with your own voice, people will find you. See that, Terry? There's hope for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, just had, we had this conversation yesterday. Uh, um, thank you, Brian, about, you know, just following your dreams and don't listen to the negative energy and yeah. listen to your inner voice. Because people are going to always tell you no, and you just, you have to believe in yourself, you know, because there's going to be a million no's, but somebody's going to tell you yes, and you just have to keep plugging forward. And that's exactly, that's exactly right. I couldn't have said it any better, Terry. They will yeah. always be no. There will always yes. be someone saying no, or yes, someone saying, what, what are you going to wear that? You know, yeah. or what are you going to do? Sing that, you know, and I stopped listening. I, 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 I got a, um, a healthy dose of self-confidence from my mom. And and I, I, I am thankful for that because it's carried me through rough times. So, John, we got about two minutes. Hopefully your computer will last another I two minutes. I hope so. <laughs> who, who knows? So where are you going from here? After you got July 24th coming up, what's yeah. after that? Or you, is it take it in as it goes? Because we just yeah, don't right know. Now, I'm not, I haven't booked t uh, pr tour dates yet around the country. Because it's, like I said, uh, we're in the process of getting back, uh, all of us. And, and, and so getting, do, doing warm-up dates here in, in the New England area where I live make a lot of sense for me. And so I'm going to be probably doing that for the rest of the summer. And um, I'm also doing, producing um, uh, another artist who lives around this area, a uh, singer-songwriter named Alan Estes. And uh, I, I'm happy to continue being a homebody when I'm not playing and uh, growing some carrots. Yay. <laughs> I like that. I yeah. love cats. <laughs> That's a pause. Yeah. <laughs> All right, John, give you social media links real quick. Okay. Uh, I can be found at uh, johnbutcher.com. Um, my new record is called uh, Special Day. And you can find it at, uh, you know, uh, uh, iTunes or Spotify or wherever great music is found. And uh, I can be found at Facebook. Um, uh, visit me at my Facebook page and we'll have a talk about guitars and kitties and growing vegetables. <laughs> yes. Awesome. You, Heck yeah. You, you know I'm going to be reaching out to you. And then when you do set up something in the Los Angeles, please let us know because we'll, I we'll come. Will, I, I will do that. I promise. So with that, so Trixie, give you social media links. Go ahead. Customtrends.tv. And be sure to check out my new YouTube channel, Being Proficient. I just started that this weekend. There's going to be so many awesome videos coming this, this weekend at Wichita, Kansas, 58th Annual Nationals. And uh, be sure to tune in to Customtrends.tv. Oh, I love that. She's got that down. Excellent. All yes. right, Terry, go ahead. Uh, my website is Terry Marie Official. And my social media is Terry Marie nonstop on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So, John Butcher, it's good seeing you again. This will not be the last time, as you know. No, thank you and so much for having me. It's good to meet you guys, Terry, Trixie. Nice it's nice you. to see thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, and the whole thing, you know, before I go, I was telling John that you have to meet the rest of the team. So, you've met two out of the 11. I love it. <laughs> All right. There's more to come. <laughs> So with that, as I always leave everybody, I always say this because it's very, very important. If you see someone without a smile, please give them one of yours because the world needs it. I'm Brian Sebastian. This is Movie Reviews and More, and we will see you next week. Thanks, John. Take care. Bye, guys. Thank you.